Hello SpaceX fans, we are back with another video for you to quench your thirst for all things space. So buckle right in, because we are going on a flight to the stars. But before we move on, make sure to press the subscribe button and do not forget to hit the bell icon to never miss out on any of the latest space niche videos. In this video, we will be bringing you up to date with the recent developments in the crazy world of SpaceX. Inside the Vehicle Assembly Building, VAB or VAB, at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida, a cavernous structure built in the 1960s for constructing the Apollo program's Saturn V rockets and later for preparing the Space Shuttle, the agency's next big rocket is taking shape. Tom Whitmire, NASA's Deputy Associate Administrator for Exploration System Development, recalled seeing the completed Space Launch System vehicle there in October after the last component, the Orion spacecraft, was installed on top. To fully view the 98 meter tall vehicle, we had to back off to the opposite side of the building. It's taller than the Statue of Liberty, he said at an October 2021 briefing about the rocket's impending launch. And I like to think of it as the Statue of Liberty because it's a very engineering complicated piece of equipment and it's very inclusive. It represents everybody. Perhaps so, but it's also symbolic of NASA's way of developing rockets, which is often characterized by cost overruns and delays. As this giant vehicle nears its first launch later this year, it runs the risk of being overtaken by commercial rockets that have benefited from new technologies and new approaches to development. NASA's newest rocket didn't originate in the VAB, of course. It began life on Capitol Hill. In 2010, the Obama administration announced its intent to cancel NASA's Constellation program for returning people to the moon, citing rising costs and delays. Some in Congress pushed back, worried about the effect on the space industry of cancelling Constellation. At that time, NASA was retiring its space shuttles. The White House and Congress reached a compromise in 2010, NASA's Authorization Bill. It directed the agency to develop a new rocket, the Space Launch System, using technologies and contracts already in place for the shuttle program. The goal was to have a rocket capable of placing at least 70 tons into orbit by the end of 2016. To achieve that, NASA extensively repurposed shuttle hardware. The core stage of SLS is a modified version of the external tank from the shuttle with four RS-25 engines developed for the shuttle mounted on its base. Attached to the sides of the core stage are two solid rocket boosters, similar to those used in the shuttle, but with five segments of solid fuel instead of four. Mounted on top of the core stage is what's called the interim cryogenic propulsion stage, which is based on the upper stage for the Delta IV rocket and is powered by one RL-10 engine, a design that has been used for decades. This stage will propel the Orion capsule to the moon or beyond after it has attained orbit. As the name suggests, this stage is a temporary one. NASA is developing a more powerful exploration upper stage with four RL-10 engines, but it won't be ready until the mid-2020s. Even though SLS uses many existing components and was not designed for reusability, combining those components to create a new rocket proved more difficult than expected. The core stage in particular turned out to be surprisingly complex as NASA struggled with the challenge of incorporating four engines. Once the first core stage was complete, it spent more than a year on a test stand at NASA's Stennis Space Center in Mississippi including two static fire tests of its engines before going to the Kennedy Space Center for launch preparations. Those difficulties pushed back the first SLS launch by years, although not all the problems were within NASA's control. Hurricanes damaged the Stennis test stand as well as the New Orleans facility where the core stage was built. The pandemic also slowed work before and after all the components arrived at the VAB for assembly. Now, after years of delays, the first launch of the SLS is finally getting close. After a series of tests inside the VAB, the completed vehicle will roll out to the launch complex 39B. NASA will then conduct a practice countdown called a wet dress rehearsal. Wet because the core stage will be loaded with liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen propellants. After that test, the SLS will roll back to the VAB for final checks before returning to the pad for the actual launch. The earliest possible launch for the Artemis 1 is 12th 
February 2022. But NASA officials say it is too soon to commit to a specific launch date. To send the uncrewed Orion spacecraft to the moon on its desired trajectory, SLS will have to launch in one of a series of two-week launch windows, dictated by a variety of constraints. The first launch window runs through 27th of February, a second opening on 12th March, followed by a third from 8 to 23rd April. A complicated factor here is the supply of propellants available. The core stages tanks store 2 million litres of liquid hydrogen and almost 3 quarters of a million litres of liquid oxygen, putting a strain on the liquid hydrogen available at the Kennedy Space Centre. This rocket is so big and we need so much liquid hydrogen that our current infrastructure at the Kennedy Space Centre just does not support an everyday launch attempt, Seraphine said. A launch attempt is postponed after the core stage is fueled, Bolger explained. NASA will have to wait days to try again. That's because a significant fraction of liquid hydrogen is just lost to boil off during each launch attempt, requiring storage tanks to be refilled before the next attempt. SLS is not the only game in town when it comes to large rockets. A factory located just outside the gates of Kennedy Space Center, Blue Origin, the spaceflight company founded by Amazon's Jeff Bezos, is working on its new Glenn rocket. While not as powerful as SLS, its ability to place up to 45 tons into orbit outclasses most other rockets in service today. Moreover, unlike SLS, the rocket's first stage is reusable, designed to land on a ship. New Glenn and SLS do have something in common, development delays. Blue Origin once projected the first launch of the rocket to be in 2020. By early 2021, though, the launch date had slipped to no earlier than the fourth quarter of 2022. A successful SpaceX Starship launch vehicle, fully reusable and able to place 100 tons into orbit, could also make the SLS obsolete. Meanwhile, halfway across the country at the southern tip of Texas, SpaceX is moving ahead at full speed with its next-generation launch system, Starship. For two years, the company has been busy building, testing, flying, and often crashing prototypes of the vehicle, culminating in a successful flight in May 2021 when the vehicle lifted off, flew to an altitude of 10 kilometers, and landed. SpaceX is now preparing for orbital test flights, installing the Starship vehicle on top of a giant booster called aptly Super Heavy. A first test flight will see Super Heavy lift off from Boca Chica, Texas test site and place Starship into orbit. With this, we have come to the end of the video. Congrats on having such a great attention span. Let us know how excited you are about the new ventures of SpaceX down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe for similar content. Until we meet next time.